Hey, Neil McDonald here, I'm back with another Neil Raw video. This one is in preparation for a customer meeting that's coming up. Um, they're gonna meet with an organization called Netcom. It's really funny, I'm trying to figure out my, cam <laughs> my camera stuff. I get a little distracted here by my hands and the, the video, but um, anyways, Neil Raw. So in this video, I wanna prep for uh, a call that's coming up in the this week, and the meeting is with a small business specialist at an army command, major command, and this person's responsible for two major buying commands. Uh, one is USA ISEC, which I did a different video for. It's a long video. Um, and then this one's Netcom. I'm going to try to keep this faster than I did the last one. Um, and uh, so it's Netcom, Network Command. And I want to go in there, dig in, find some information that'll help us prepare for the call and go in and make sure when we're talking to this person, um, at, at, uh, in the army, that we have the right questions we wanna ask, that we have the objectives we're looking for, that we understand about NETCOM and what we wanna um, uh, learn in order to move the sale forward. Everything in sales is about moving a step closer to the final award, let's say, right? And um, in this particular case, it's all about research and just trying to look into stuff. I wanna take you down that process that I, that I do to prepare for this. That's why I call it Neil Raw. I haven't done any of this research. I'm gonna go in right now and do it. And what I'm trying to do for you is to give you coaching as if you were one of my customers. Um, I have very few customer account and it's only the ones who can afford me. And I wanna figure out how can I help the rest of you. And so for you, if you watch me and you see the things I do, hopefully it'll teach you how I get the information I get from my customers and how they can get in ahead of their competitors um, and be more prepared for a meeting to make sure it's a successful meeting and not just another you know, meeting because meetings for the sake of meetings are not worth it. All right, let me share my screen here. Um, okay, so uh, Netcom is the command. You can see it up here, US Army Network Enterprise Technology Command. Um, so there's a couple of different processes I go through. First off, I, I always try to find the home page and, and dig into whatever they make available. I can see immediately that this is an old looking site. I'm hoping there's somewhere else that has a modern uh, uh, site for them or presence for them on the internet, but it doesn't really matter. And then uh, the other part is Google. You're gonna see me go down this path of Google until I find a good amount of information. I don't need to know everything. I just need to know enough to be able to have a conversation with, um, in this particular case, it's Sonia and the Army. Uh, I need to have enough uh, material that I can ask the right questions and help her understand that I've done my homework and I'm looking for her to push me past the barriers that I've run into. Uh, and generally the barrier is, I don't know who to actually talk to at a program office or I want an introduction. So let's dig through this. I'm gonna um, zoom in a little bit in here. By the way, um, I'm going back and forth between this page and this, which is my call plan sheet. So I have a call plan sheet. I have the basic information about who I'm talking to. And then you can see introduction talking points. This is what I use to just get the conversation started. I don't wanna talk about the weather or golf. Um, I wanna talk about, hey, I was looking at this document that you did or this, I watched this YouTube video um, that referenced you or something that just gets the conversation going, but it, it does it in an ice breaking way compared to diving straight into the meat of it. And then the purpose of the call, I wanna know myself what's the purpose of the call and my team but i also want to be able to communicate to Son sonia hey the purpose of this call is blah 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 blah. does that sound good to you and um generally it does because generally we're the ones trying to set the meeting up for her um, and it's not like her reaching out to us if she was trying to reach out to us she would have a different purpose um and and then meeting objectives are what i want to get out of the of the call so specifically i want to move the sale forward what moves the sale forward could be you give me a strategic document or like here it's a forecast. Um, I love forecast because it has more people I can learn about and then and call. Um, or it's a, uh, setting up a meeting for me, which would be great. So there's these specific things you wanna do to move forward. Guaranteed you're not getting a contract just by making a phone call, right? A contract is a formal process, RFI, pre-RFP, uh, pre RFP response, right? And, and so no one's just gonna hand you the contract. So you need to do your homework. This is that uh, part of it. And so the bottom part of this is the initial questions, additional questions. And this is just all related to um, giving me questions I can ask that drive the conversation forward. It's a 30 minute meeting that I always have. Uh, I never do more than 30 minutes um, because you, one, you wanna respect your time. Two, I wanna be able to get in, get something, get out, and then call them back another time. Um, and so in this particular case, I wanna write down some of the questions. The questions you see on this sheet at the moment and any of the information 
it's related to USA ISEC. And Sonia is actually responsible for USA ISEC and Netcom. So I'm, I'm kind of combining two of them in here. Um, anyways, so we have that information. I did want to say um, my sales approach is something you should look into. And it's built off a methodology called spin selling. Spin selling stands for, uh, it's a questioning approach, uh, situational questions, problem questions, implication questions, and needs payoff questions. Situational questions tend to be factual questions like, you know, how many people work at uh, NECOM? Uh, you know, what type of, um, uh, what buildings do you have? You know, like, I don't know. Um, you know, the factual questions. I'm kind of drawing a blank for a second. Uh, problem questions are the challenges they're facing. You know, the problem is uh, our, our, uh, our uh, buildings are falling apart or the servers aren't being patched at a good enough time. Um, our lawns overgrown, whatever it is, right? Those are the problems. The implication is um, who else is it impacting? For example, if the lawns are overgrown, then maybe it's impacting the quality of a, uh, you know, change of command ceremony because they come out and they're, they're all walking through tall grass and getting ticks or something, right? A well-maintained landscape could uh, really make the base look great or something, right? The implication is that um, some other business office or, or program office within that organization is also impacted even though it's the facility folks who are having the problem of the lawn overgrowing as you know this example and then needs payoff is if we do what we do um, for you how will that benefit you so um, i don't know if you ever heard this but features tell and story sell well features are um all about um you know exactly the factual things they're going to get but benefits the stories but benefits are how it will affect them positively. Anyways, long story short, um, that's, that's the selling methodology I use. And so when I'm doing my research, I'm looking for questions that um, fit right now with this person, I'm looking for situational type questions. Questions I can learn about their command, about their challenges, et cetera. Um, maybe sliding a little bit into problems. I don't focus on implication or needs payoff in this meeting. When I have a second and third meeting, I really dig into a lot more um, uh, questions on the on the right side of that spin selling. Okay, so let me look at this. Um, anytime I come in, I'm always clicking on every link I can. Um, so let's just start clicking on things. Just want to open these. Uh, I've done this one before. Um, now that I recognize it. So custom applications. Some of these will apply, some of they won't. So this command group, nice little pop out. Um, this tells me who's in charge over there. So deputy director sometimes is a, is a, uh, a person to kind of look to if you don't know this. The, the military, they rotate through commands throughout the entire um, army. But the, the deputy commander, the civilian side, tends to be the um, people who stay there long term. Um, so that's definitely somebody worth looking into, and I can look into that in a minute. Actually, I'll just click on him. And then, I mean, for the commander, though, I would be looking for, do they have any uh, documents out there? Okay, so let me keep looking. Here's their mission statement. This is something I'm just tracking. So NETCOM leads global operations for the Army's portion of the DOD, uh, I'm assuming that means infra information network, ensuring freedom of information, freedom of action in cyberspace. <laughs> That's one that's kind of hard for me to read. Um, but a professional team of teams employing and securing seamless strategic tactical network. Uh, okay, so I, I don't really, none of that is gonna help with my customer. I, and by the way, before I go to those tabs, I'm just trying to cover the entire first page here and see what's here. So here's Netcom Portal, which I'm assuming is the same as what we just found up here, Netcom Portal, it is. And then um, CIO, so CIO G6, I don't care because this is going outside of Netcom and these are just referral links. So none of this, but news, um, so news archive I'm gonna click on because it is Netcom's news. And I can't remember if we already had a link for that. And then contact us. I'll try that one, and that's it. Um, these are the links on the right-hand side. Whoa, that's a wide page. Um, th these are all links to external sources, so I don't care about those. Uh, let me come back. That's, so that's how I quickly look at a, uh, their homepage. Oh, I'm looking here. They've got a YouTube channel, I mean, excuse me, a Facebook, and they've got um, a YouTube one. So I'm gonna click on the YouTube one, and then I don't know what this is. These are photos, I don't care about photos. Okay, so let's just kind of start scrolling over. Um, this one here was the, uh, I don't even know what this one was. Um, this is the organization. Okay, so um, 
So send an email to the command group. Oh, so the, this is funny. So if you look at these, what they did is, and this is so old school, that's how I know this is really an old site, is they set it up so it goes to a generic email address and the subject line says, hey, attention commanding general. You can see that down below. None of that matters to me. So these are, those are useless to me, uh, to my customer, right? And here's Flickr for photos, I did the YouTube page. Um, and so that's cool. Um, and then coming down here, so subordinate organizations. So already this is great for me. Now I can see who the subordinate organizations are for Netcom, um, which is interesting. I, I, like I wouldn't have thought Signal is a subordinate organization. So I'm gonna come back to that in a minute. And then here's the staff and let's see if it, I'm looking down below and it's the same thing. These are just emails. So this, so these two boxes are useless to me, but this one, um, this one's good. And I'm going to come back to this. In fact, I'll just drag this guy to the end. So I look at it last. Uh, Cause I want to look at the ones here's brief history. The only reason I look at history is to see if there's modern history. Um, so here, the last thing they've got is July 16th. Uh, designated army cyber command as an army component command, STRATCOM. So at the same time, okay, so in 2016, NETCOM is now part of US uh, cyber. So now I, uh, this one, I'll just take a quick note. Up here, I've got a lot of notes going. So um, NETCOM is part of, how about sub to, um, what's it called, cyber command? USAR cyber. USA are cyber. There we go. Um, it just helps me and I can come back and look at that. Okay, and that's perfect. I don't need anything else from the uh, history. So moving forward, I'm into the industry engagement. This is some of their guidance. They're talking about if you wanna work with these guys and you know, gotta tell them they're gonna misspelling there. Um, download and complete both Netcom industry requests and foreign interest. So, this thing just seems antiquated to me. It could, it could be still accurate, but um, so, and here it's talking about getting hold of them by you know, phone and random, I hate random emails. It's just, it's, it's, um, you know, it just seems like it goes to oblivion. So, uh, but what I am gonna do is I'm just gonna take this link, control C, and I'm gonna come back here and, and put a question in. Um, you know, which is, I've got a lot of questions on this one, but um, does Netcom still use the industry engagement, industry engagement forms, or is there a new process? Let me get rid of that double space that snuck in there. Oh, it's not there. So here, and I'm filling this out. I don't know if I said this on this link, but um, in here, I'm filling this out for uh, my customer. So my customer is going to be the one calling these people and I want them to have the most they can. And so when they're doing their own prep based off of my research, they'll be able to go back and click on that and go, oh, I see what you're saying, Neil, if they got an official form here. I don't need this anymore. I'm going to get rid of it. It's got Netcom guidelines for vendors seeking to market um, here. Just looking at this. Um, so here can receive briefings, presentations via phone, video, uh, set of guidelines. So email netcom, understand schedules are subject to change. Only if somebody's sick, if you're pre preempted, um, if 10 minutes late for a scheduled appointment, blah, 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 blah. So I'm closing that. That's all that is just guidance to say be on time. Um, here, so this was, uh, so this is something I knew this was, uh, this was a link that I clicked on like up here. I think it's, uh, it's either the Netcom portal or the custom app. Um, so anyways, it didn't work. That's fine. No. So it was the Netcom portal. So that's an internal portal. It's not us. We move on. I don't know what gears is. It's an automated packet document routing and tracking system. Built on SharePoint, great. For all my SharePoint uh, folks out there, implements global management of business processes, makes sense, it provides pre-built. What's the point? Yes, so it's a, <laughs> so it's just automate, automates the routing. 
what I'm missing here is I don't understand the point of it. Like, I don't understand, excuse me. Um, I don't understand the point of the, of the link. Okay. So it's for people internal. So they're making it available. Um, so the, anyway, so gears had nothing to do with us. That's custom. So Netcom portal and custom application. I quickly looked at it and I can see that it isn't anything to do with us. Okay. So let's look at Patrick here. He serves the deputy commanding serves as the deputy commanding general, um, for Netcom manages and provides strategic direction and uh, sure freedom. So anyways, he's doing that stuff is an it professional leader in decades of proven experience. Uh, what I'm really looking for is how long has he been here? He's served major products. So this guy's an IT guy. He knows what he's doing. Um, senior vice president for a private company and director of IT for Didic, or however you say that. Prior to the assignment, he served in the US Army for over 20 years, 28 years. So he is very experienced with the Army and IT. Key positions is G6, 82nd. So hey, you're jumping out of airplanes, same as me. Um, so uh, joint command, J6, this person has worked everywhere. Um, he was in while I was in. Um, provided managed IT support, command and control. You know what I missed though? So he's this, this, this guy is, this guy is uh, solid. Um, what I'm missing is how long he's been here. I don't know if you guys saw that on here, but um, uh, so for him, I don't need my customer to talk to him, but um, one of the things that might come out of this and we'll figure this out is, um, you know, should we meet, you know, a question can be, can we, can we get a meeting set up with this guy or does he have direct reports? It might be more, it might make more sense for us to meet his direct reports. What I want to find, and I'll do this in a minute is an org chart for Netcom if I can find it. Okay. So let me come down here. So I don't know if you notice this, there's two different types of sites. So here's Netcom's old army type site. I'm assuming it's old army type site, right? And then here's the army, you know, the overall army.mil site. And in here, they have all sorts of pages for every command and they just put basic stuff down. So this one is owned by the operate, uh, the army and managed by them. Um, the other one is owned and operated by Netcom, you know, generally. Okay, so let's come down. Um, now, they've got top stories. Don't ignore these. You, you come through and you might find a little gem that's out there. Um, and you just see the dates and you can kind of track on them. Um, so Army recognizes community partnership, cyber protection teams capable and ready. Um, forging the Army's cyber defense. Let's pop that one open. Um, and actually, I might just click this because it might tell me a little bit about the command structure. Uh, branch support 29. I don't even know what that is. Uh, must be supporting internal stuff for Pennsylvania. First listed female soldier. Um, and then that's it for there. So then let me come up. This is the basics on their about page. Hey, so Netcom global operation for the Army's portion of the same thing. Uh, so here's the leadership. So that's still good to go. Professional. So here's a video. Um, this centennial, I'm just going to click really quick. Eight minutes. So, uh, okay. So I don't really care about this, this, this video, it's nice, but it's just a walk down memory lane. And for this call, I'm not looking to walk down memory lane. So let me move on. Um, oh, this is interesting. So about us, so let's see what we got here. I'm clicking on organization, command contacts. Let's see if it's something new. Um, vendor engagement. Those are the same ones we saw. And miscellaneous, Army Mars. What is that? Uh, Mars stands for radio system headquartered there. But whatever. So our, our folks aren't dealing with that at all. So I'm just going to close that. Okay. So here was some point of contacts that came from, I think the bottom, remember, uh, down here, it's a context. So public affairs, people, inspector general. So we don't need any of this because, um, we already have context on this, in this command and we're just trying to figure out the right questions to ask. Okay. So here's their netcom video, um, YouTube place. I always quickly just jump to the video section because in the videos you can sort it out. Uh, I mean, you can see it by most recent. So really grays. <laughs> um, so let's see what that is. I don't know what Greeley Gray's is, and I feel. Welcome to Netcom News.
So, okay. So that was just, these ones here are just um, stuff. The, you know, again, it's all useful if, if, if you're fitting there, but it doesn't it fit for us. This one here is Netcom News. I'm going to click and see. It's one minute. Welcome. I don't know if you can hear it. Let's see what Soldiers we got. from ATC Netcom performed a new Army combat fitness test for the first time on Morris. So this is just those guys, you know, doing the AP. Oh, I should have understood that. That's fit Army uh, combat fitness test. Um, Halloween costume. Be fun to look at some of the stuff, but none of it. I'm assuming rewind means history, but let's just see. Yeah, it's, I'm not even gonna do it. So I think a lot of this stuff is less, is, is more Facebook type stuff rather than um, NCO induction, change of, change of command. These are just, so these are less about, these are less useful to me. So I'm just gonna cancel and get out of it. Um, they're more, let's call it social type stuff. So here was a big one for me. The Forging the Army Cyber Defense was one of the articles we saw. And this is by PEO EIS, which works closely with these guys. Um, okay, so let's come in here really quick. Uh, first off, I, I like doing the caption just to see who's talking. So here's a three star on the board. No, <laughs> can't be. Huh. Um, writing something there. So the Forge is an open day open door for industry to collaborate with the army on cybersecurity. Um, so, so uh, explained. So here is a name. Let me just grab that because I got it. I'm going to put it over here on my handy list. Um, this guy is somebody, see him, he's the director for applied cyber technologies at the PEO. And so that's a place they'll be trying to get to as they continue to move on we can decide later when I finalize the preparation that I'm doing for my customer's call. Do you want to ask um, Sonia who we're calling it for an introduction to this person or not? So, okay, people are adding stuff to tackle this problem, PEO. So I, the problem I got though here is I got to make sure it's not going too far away from the people I'm talking to. So really they're just talking about Okay, so I'm going to close this down because um, here they're talking about really this, this the Forge, which is um, a group. And I, I'd be curious if it's like the Na Navy. Um, Navy has one, Naval X, I think it's called. And it's like this idea of trying to bring people together. But I'm going to move on because it doesn't really help me on the call prep that I'm doing. 119 cyber protection teams cable. This one was interesting to me because I was wondering whether these guys, where am I? Um, Get a little confused. Okay, so right here, so 169th. So I don't even know if 169th is under these guys. Um, let me just figure it out. Cyber protection. It's going through pretty fast. I'm looking, I'm going through fast to see if I can find out the, the organizational structure to see if 169th even fits. I didn't see anything that showed me that it fit in, but it looks like they're in National Guard, so I'm just gonna close it. I don't need it. Um, okay, so there's, the reason I still have this open is for the orgs, because I'm gonna come back to those guys in a minute. Um, Netcom, we already did the contact us. You'll notice the public affairs, so I'm gonna close that. Okay, so, um, where am I? So, oh, that's funny, so I already got this guy open. And Army Netcom, we'll come back to that in a second. So let's open these guys really quick. I'm just gonna look at them from a high level and see what I see. Um, I don't wanna make another hour and a half video <laughs> for you, but I can look in. See, these guys have a modern website. Um, okay, so they conduct Department of Defense information network operations to enable mission command um, throughout everywhere. So um, about us, mission, Um, so this one's a little harder for me because I'm looking at this. This is a question I need to ask. So they've got a lot of units. So let me go back. I think I'm not going to go too far into these. I'm going to ask the question. Netcom seems to have a lot of subordinate organizations. 
any any advice on how we should pursue it? So let's kind of do that. Um, so let me get that question in here. So Netcom seems to have a lot of um, subordinate organizations. Any advice on uh, which to pursue? I mean, we're doing a lot of research here, but these guys aren't there. This 21st signal command, their mission is to provide command and control support to the, to leadership. So um, a lot of these guys, this is interesting. So it's, I'm gonna back away from this and, and, and this might be a little confusing, but I'm gonna back away because we're, our meeting is with Netcom and, and at that high major command. Um, uh, and so a lot of these entities that I, that I clicked open, they've all got their own different missions, but I wanna first meet with this person and go, how tied in uh, are you to these guys? Because, and here's why, because these um, 21st Signal Brigade, for example, has a specific mission. But the reason we're looking at Netcom is because Netcom is slowly, or maybe quickly, becoming the, the um, central place where the Army will begin to procure IT services, such as what my customer sells, network operations, cybersecurity. And so what we wanna do is get in with them and make sure um, you know we're on their radar, we're aware of opportunities, we can pursue opportunities. And um, so what I wanna find out is how is all these sub subordinate commands rolling back up into Netcom? Is anything changing? Is there any documentation we can use to research? So um, let me go ahead and close that one, close that one. I will look at this really quick. So this one here, operate and protect the global network enterprise for Eastern region CONUS. Um, okay, so this, I mean, this is interesting. So this fits much more into the cyber side to ensure mission partners freedom of maneuver within the cyber domain. Um, it's funny, I just said that, but uh, yeah, so I, I mean, I gotta, we gotta ask them about this because this whole way of how they're shaping things up, here's the Eastern domain, I think I just read that right, Eastern region, and then here's the, Western region, which failed, but okay. So let me close that. And, and, and by the way, this is why I do these raw videos. I want you to see where I run down a path like a maze and I hit a wall and I, ah, that's not really right. Let me come back. Or, you know, it's not hard to figure out that a wall is not right on a maze, but you know, I come back to a no good and I keep going. I'm, I'm trying to stay focused in my call prep because you only get 30 minutes in a call. I mean, you might get a little longer, but you should plan on only getting that 30 minutes and really that 30 minutes is 20 minutes. So what are the questions you want to ask to learn a little bit more to move forward and going too far into these signal brigades? It, I'm just deciding they're outside my range. Um, so let me come into these then. So these are all reserve commands. Um, and I don't want to have any conversation about those at the moment. Um, okay. So that was the organization. So we're tracking on this guy. I already wrote some questions down. Now I wanted to come back here and show you uh, how I do this with Google, right? Everything I've done so far in this entire video was based off of the Netcom homepage. I just kind of kept clicking through. But one of the things I like about coming here, like the first thing I see is um, Army Netcom doles out $100 million to GDIT. Well, my customer works with GDIT, but maybe they don't work with this part of GDIT, and so they need to get an introduction. I'm definitely going to find that out. Um, here's just a bio, an icon retires, best warriors. Uh, so this is Patrick Dedham, who's the same person, right? Um, yep. So I'm just reading it. So see wins, and this is 2019. U.S. Army Netcom contract. Um, so I have a friend who just went to start working there, and if I can help um, my customer get in to talk with them, maybe they can subcontract under here. So I'm going to check into that. Um, Netcom Army news article. Oh, this is interesting. So maybe they're putting out an article, you know, things of interest. I'm going to go into that. My Herald Review. <laughs> like I found another gem previously with that that newspaper. So I'm going to check this. Um, commanding the voice of the army. Well, so I want to learn a little bit about her. Um, so this is an $18 million contract. Just seeing if it's different contracts. Same contract, so. 
Um, okay, so U.S. Army Depths Mill, we already tried this, didn't work. Um, first two sisters, that was pretty cool. Two sisters became army generals. Um, I think like at the same time, which is really cool, or they're simultaneous. Um, this one here, I think we already saw success story, photos, general dynamics awarded, GDIT, it's all the same thing. Next comes senior leadership development. Let's take that one for a look. Army budget requests one, look at this. Arm, so it's April, army budget requests an additional 1 billion for network modernization. My customer supports network operations, network management, network modernization. Um, their world is 1.5 billion. They're not looking for all of it, <laughs> just a little bit. And if they can find the right places to get in, they can focus. And if they stay focused on the Army or DOD, they can really uh, expand. Um, so I'm going to pause there because that's more than enough. I'm, I've got so much information uh, in preparation of this call. So it's a good call. Uh, but let me come here. So here they're doling it out. We're going to see what this is. Um, 118 million announced on Thursday. So that means this contract just, it probably hadn't even started. It might say in here when it starts, but um, it sure is starting in 2020 here, uh, calendar year. Um, so Network Enterprise Technology Command. I don't even know if that's the same one. So I might just take that guy for a ride. Unless that's exactly what I just uh, did. <laughs> that's funny. Maybe I shouldn't do these videos when I'm tired. So Netcom is what I just searched for. Uh, cut me some slack. Neil Raw. Because um, I'm finding good stuff and I'm forgetting some of the basics. But So the Army issued the task order on Alliant. This one's a big deal. So it tells my customer, um, and I'm going to save this entire link really quick uh, up here on the top. Uh, GDIT 118 mil network modern network award with Netcom. Uh, so here, let me just let me finish this up really quick. Okay, um, in this particular case. Uh, uh, I want to be able to f let them know it's Alliant 2 because if this stuff's coming out on a Alliant 2, a contract vehicle that's out there, then um, my customer needs to be making sure they're tied into the GDIT Alliant 2 people, um, et cetera. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. So it just started. That means it's going out till 2024 or 2025. That's awesome. I don't need a lot more about that. I'll close it since I have the link. Sosi is another one. Um, and this one's not huge, but it but they're a large company, and they can use smalls. And so I just um, I'm just going to add this one uh, here, and so see how do they spell their name with a small i, and so see too. This is uh, what so many people should be doing in smalls is figuring out how to get on teams, how to chase things down. Okay, so uh, Netcom has their news article in the commands civilian of the year. Congratulations. So these, I'm just looking really quick to see on the Facebook post, are they, are they more social posts to, um, um, you know, do shout outs for, for uh, people within the command or is it useful information for those of us in the industry? Um, it's okay either way, but if it's not helpful to me, I just move on. And I think I saw a lot of this. This one drives me nuts. It's like, come on, make the picture a little smaller so they can fit in and look great. Um, okay, so this is all just, you know, the standard good stuff, key leaders, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna close that. Facebook tends to be social. Okay, so here's the command commander for Netcom and finding um, whatever this person has. So, Okay, fine. I'm going to read this one really quick. Find ourselves meetings, receiving updates, current activities and installations, boarding a plane, bound for somewhere else, skiing or kayaking, ghost wars, um, so I'm just reading this stuff. 
so this is what I was talking about, right? She's only going to be there two years. That's why you want to get to know the deputy commander, uh, their continuity. Certainly the commander's there, but the command set the vision move forward. As industry, we've test, you know, they tend to be less um, interacting with us and more about just running the entire organization. Okay, so 15,000 people, that's good to know. Um, commander of the unit tasked with maintaining and defending the Army's network. I mean, this is gold for anybody in network operations. Um, we're a global com command subordinate to the Army Cyber Command. Um, shouldering an enormous amount of responsibility. So part of this is personal. Um, just seeing if there's anything that's not. Okay. So, um, you know, a lot of people get in there and try to understand her personally. We're not going to become her best friend. We want to know what her challenges are and what she wants us in industry to do and less about the fact that her, her husband, her parents and everybody were, uh, you know, vets, et cetera. Um, we're not going to be a, these people's best friends. So we want to learn the challenge because that's how we become their best friend from business perspective. So if you're not familiar with, um, DVID, I don't know if there's a way to say this acronym, but, um, a lot of defense stuff is out there and it's just a great resource for information, learning. People on your team should be learning about this stuff. Um, okay, so let's look, just seeing what we got here. Uh, Deputy Commander. So, okay, so here what I'm seeing is this guy, Colonel Kevin. So Kevin is the Deputy Commander of Digital Integration for Netcom. Um, and so these are images. And so I'm not going to do this with you right now because I don't want to tie you up, but there's a couple of things I would do this, do with this. One is I would go search on Google, see if I can find him and find some um, PDFs or PowerPoints he's done because if he's out there briefing people, I want to know what he's briefing them on. If he's briefing industry, it's often so hard to find things. That's why on my LinkedIn, join me on LinkedIn, on my LinkedIn account, I'm constantly uh, posting things that I find that the government is putting out there, but it's, it's really not broadly um, visible. So, I'm going to leave him though, because he's a name I can research later um, in digital integration. So that's handy. And then army budget. Oh, so this one we were talking about, and this might be where I wrap up this video. Um, okay. So this is good. I mean, already in this little caption, I'm seeing four lines of effort. What are they? So the army plans to spend 8 billion over the next five years. Wow. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of room there. So according to the Pentagon's latest budget requests and army documents, um, if you're not familiar, you can go in, you can dig into all these and find a lot of good information. But the pl and, and, and by the way, keep in mind, if you're like below a million dollars, don't get this deep into knowing what the Army's stuff is, right? You need to get to know companies that are five and 10 million. And then as you continue to grow, get to know companies that are 10 and 20 and 50 million. But, um, you know, until you're making 5 million, you just don't have the money or the bandwidth really to be digging deep into an organization. So don't, don't totally get caught up in this. There's, there's stages you move forward. I hate it when, uh, People out there sit there and imply that small businesses should somehow do the same homework that um, larges do. Larges have capture managers and proposal managers and um, business development people, and they don't realize, people don't realize that smalls, it's generally the same person. And so, you know, for them to be able to go deep into an opportunity or deep into a customer, if you go into any small business that's like five to 10 million, you'll find a person who's in BD and you ask them, what are you responsible for? Oh, just a couple of agencies, DHS. Navy, Army, and EPA. It's like, what? You know, and you go into a, a large, it's like, what are you responsible for? DHS, but only this part of DHS. So don't overwhelm yourself. Part of what I'm trying to do here is just show you how to quickly prepare for a, a meeting. So when I say you can find information on, in the budget and Army documents, well, you know, when you get to that stage. Okay, so here though, I wanna uh, read this just to see, Okay, network modernization. I don't have anything yet that talks about network modernization. And this is huge. I'm going into this meeting with this, or I'm not, but my customer's going into this meeting with these folks at Netcom. They should, my customer should know what the six modernization priorities are for the Army Chief of Staff. Um, these priorities seek to better understand the posture, so multi-domain. I'm going to come back in a minute and search with you, but I just want to see if they actually reference the name of the document. Um, the Army believes it will need hard and resilient, of course. This is just saying what they need to do. Um, what does the network need to be by 2028? 
I mean, this is huge, understanding where you're going, especially if you focus on core competency, right? Just stick with network operations and cyber, which is related, that's perfect. And, and you can um, uh, just become the subject matter experts for the government. Okay, so we've gotta be able to dominate. Yes, of course. Um, so here's one, here's another person's name, right? This person's Major General Peter Gallagher, Director of the Army's Network Cross-Functional Team. I don't ever need to talk with Peter uh, Gallagher, neither does my customer. But doing some research on this general and the Army's network cross-functional team might lead to a lot of information that could be helpful and direct reports where you can figure out a way to fit in at the appropriate level that you are, whether it's part of the team where you can get on with like GDIT or somebody, or, um, or it's you know beginning to try to win primes. Okay, so we've got to be able to connect distributed stuff or command coast. Um, Army has developed a list of four priorities. Wait a minute. <laughs> so let me just put this together. Six modernization priorities, priorities. And where was the other one? And the Army has developed a list of four priorities in revamping the network, which they describe as lines of effort. Okay, I'm not quite sure. So there's, I'm, I'm sure I'm not totally reading it, but um, the first of these priorities to provide insured network transport in a contested environment. Oh, that makes sense. So I'm just pausing for a second. Much of the money to support that initiative go towards purchasing and developing new handheld stuff. Um, the Army asked for a lot of money for blah, blah, blah. Uh, so here's the people who've got it. So these guys here, um, these are companies that I wanna make sure my customer is tracking on. It's like, look, if you're really trying to get into Netcom, then get in and begin to build a relationship with um, these folks, which they've already done a couple of them. Okay, so the budget request also includes 427, million for tactical stuff. I don't want to read that too much, but um, I'm going to come down really fast. I don't, I don't care about the money at the moment. I, I do in general, but for this video, um, what I'm really looking for is, so here's, um, yeah, it's funny. So this is a great, first off, I want to grab this guy. It's a great article. So let me just put it in here so I don't lose it. And um, now what I want to do though is, what did they say? Um, six modernization prioritizations. Let me try this. Um, give it a Google shot. And I'm, and I'm doing this mostly for me to be able to find the information, but also for you to be able to see. So uh, network and army is lots of keywords I forgot. Let's see if we can find it. Um, army mill, here's, a, here's an article. Uh, stand two. This is a while ago. Uh, actually, let me make sure I'm looking at the past year is what I really try to do. 2019 Army. Uh, so that's Army modernization, but I'm looking for the um, network stuff. So like this. Come on, show me. Wow. So here, Army to free up another 10 billion for these priorities in Futures Command or wherever. Um, to fund modernization priorities. And that's somebody else, I don't know what it is. Okay, so let me stop there for a second because there's so much, but Futures Command is probably where I can find a lot of the documents I'm talking about. Just looking in here if they see it. So here you go. This is this is all I was looking for. Is, um, so the six modernization priorities are long range precision fire. Okay, so these are the Army's modernization priorities. Um, one is long range fire. The other is combat vehicles. The next is vertical lift. The fourth is network and soldier lethality. And okay, so there's six Army modernization priorities. Is how I'm relating this back to that article I was reading. And then the network has four. So let's look at this real quick. Um, to achieve this, there's cross-functional teams. Where's the one? Uh, so the network is Aberdeen Proven Ground. That's people we're talking to. Um, since last, uh, oh, what is this? Oh, these are just corners. This is good stuff. It's, it, this is an event. Sorry, I'm moving pretty fast. Um, so the, the part that I see, though, is 
my Google search led me to the, to the uh, six, obviously the six army. So let me do the um, four network modernization priorities. Let's see if that does any better for me. Um, huh, industry experts. Um, Okay, so this is enough here for me to just take a couple of things. Um, this guy I'm done with, I don't need that article. 2019, this is the Army Modernization Strategy. Um, I would definitely go find that, and I am gonna find this to uh, just kind of put it out there. It's the direction the Army's trying to go. Um, and, and look at this, the Army Modernization Strategy supports the priorities laid out in the Army strategy. Um, if you take the time to read some of these things, and I, and I swear it's just, it's no different than binge watching, you know, uh, uh, Mrs. Maisel or something, right, is take the time to read some of these stuff and all of a sudden your eyes will be open to the bigger picture of where the army's going. And when you have conversations with people in there, they'll know that, you, that you're tracking on this and you want to help. And you're not just coming with an open arm as a small business saying, hey, you know, where can we fit? You know, you're telling them where you can fit. Um, here is a link. I, <laughs> so the army network, um, what is it? It's a directive in 2017 cross-functional team is four lines of effort, unified. So I just clicked on a link, right, that popped in. Um, and so these, uh, those are the same ones I just saw. Related documents. Okay, so I clicked on a link and it talks about Army Network. I'm not gonna research that with you, but I'll come back to that. But here's the Army Modernization from GAO, so Government uh, Accountability Office. These are all always helpful for me to look in or you to look in to get some tips. So here, steps needed to ensure the Army's future command fully applies leading practices. Oh, I hate this. Um, these type of documents you gotta go sideways, but that's right. Um, okay, so the Army network, a mobile system, they're describing the priority. Um, this'll be a big document to read, and I don't wanna go too far into it with you, but I do wanna sit there and just show like how I might look at it. So I'm looking at the contents, obviously, to see what fits. Um, so here they're just talking about uh, this part I'm going to skip with you because it's really deep and it's, it's a, an advanced um, exercise that those of us who are experienced reading documents go through where we dig into this and find the challenges that um, we can talk to. I definitely don't need any of this though for the preparation of that meeting. So I'm going to skip it. Um, here's CCD's roadmap to modernizing modernizing the army network, um, combat capabilities development command. Formation of the soldiers dropped in the middle of mega city. Okay, this is, I'm just gonna skip this whole thing because it's way too, <laughs> that stuff is way too advanced for my customers. We're talking about swarming within a city with drones. Um, industry to inspire network modernization. So this one, see right here, technical exchange meeting. I was telling you, this guy Gallagher, uh, what's his name, Peter Gallagher? Pete Gallagher, uh, he's the major general from this team. 670 people came to that. Um, I don't know where his deck is, but I guarantee you I'm gonna find it. Um, so the Army conducts its fourth largest tactical network focused tactical exchange meeting, information back and forth in Austin where the Futures Command is with industry last week, and this is late 2019. Um, Providing attendees with a roadmap on how we can influence it. Well, my customer absolutely needs to know what these are. Um, I'm going to scroll through pretty fast just to see if I happen to see a link. Um, okay. I mean, even this stuff here is awesome because I can go find stuff on theirs. But I'm telling you, I want to pause for a second because I'm not going to do it with you. But because I because I already see where I'm going to go with this. Um, and this video is mostly about looking over my shoulder during Neil Raw. But um, uh, Pete you know, Major General Pete, Pete is putting out information to industry on how we can succeed in there by understanding what the Army is trying to do and what they're looking for from industry. If you're in network operations or you're in the network side of the house, you need to know what he's saying. You need to know what his team's saying. And so um, I'm putting him on the top of the list for my customer to follow as an influencer. Anything Pete says, they should hear. Um, and the other thing is, uh, um, the other thing is I'm going to go dig and find these, uh, these slides. These slides are out there. And this is the difference between people who succeed and people who don't 
is go get them. It might take some work, but let's say it takes me two hours to find the documents, whether I'm Google or picking up the phone and trying to call them or whatever. Let, let's say it takes two, four hours, doesn't matter. We're trying to land millions in business. To do this kind of research is not a problem. I won't go to lunch. I won't watch um, you know, the, the current TV show. I'll skip a movie. You know, I'll dig into it. As soon as I have these, it'll set me up for the next couple of years because first off, I know the people who can get me more information. And second, inside of there, I'm sure there's tons of information that are actionable through the next 12 to 24 months that will lead me and my customers forward in trying to you know, get this type of work. So anyways, when you see stuff like this that fits into what, with what you do, specifically, then go after and get uh, that additional documentation. And then let's look at this last one, and this is where I'll wrap up. So Army will speed up IT modernization on several different uh, bases. So let's, who is doing this? Um, I mean, these guys do a lot of podcasts, but I'm trying to see. Okay, so it must be like the CIO or somebody's talking about it. This is worthwhile looking at for a person who's in um, uh, IT and, and, uh, and can help with the IT monetization. If you're in IT and you're supporting the Army, definitely spend the time to listen to this. If I push play, it is, I'm just seeing how long it is. New Year's resolutions are hard. Six minutes, right? I'm gonna listen to this thing and hear what they're saying and I'll learn a little bit more. Um, you know, at maximizing our commute to and from work, things like that. Uh, we can really get a lot of stuff from these people out in the industry, out in the field, media, as well as from the government sources. Um, okay, so let me come all the way back, just wrapping up this video and this activity that I'm doing. The whole purpose of this video is Neil Raw, right? So if you're going through this, um, I'm trying to show you how I dig into information and find um, uh, facts that I'm looking for. So basic facts that I'm looking for, people I could follow up on, people I can just track and learn from like, uh, you know, Major General Gallagher there. Um, and uh, um, links to other information that could be helpful to my customer. But all of this is designed to help me with this call planning that I'm doing so that when I go talk to this person, Sonia, um, if you've watched my two videos, I've done three hours of preparation for this meeting already, and I'm gonna do at least another hour refining my call plan sheet so that when my customer goes in, they're prepared to ask the right questions. Um, and, and it's always fun, like if you're the one who's actually doing the research, you go in so knowledgeable and you're able to drive the conversation around. I've seen conversations that are just halting, right? Somebody says something in the, and there's this quiet thing, but if you're prepared and you have good information to keep the conversation flowing, um, then you can get real value out of every meeting you do and you should expect, you should have tangible next steps coming out of a meeting. That's exactly what I was looking for in here and the questions and the information I gathered will lead to me being able to meet those objectives that I um, put on this call plan sheet. So hope you found this valuable. Government contracting is not a secret, it's just a process. Digging deep into this stuff is part of the process. It's also part of the fun. And when you land uh, multi-million dollar pieces of business, it's all gonna come back and going, hey, it started with a Google search. So go make it happen. I'll see you in the next video. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. Um, put a comment down below. Give me any kind of guidance that'll make these videos better for you or just tell me what's going right and I'll do more of it. I'll talk to you soon.